giving back to God with my tithes and offerings. So does Erica. She writes to us to say, I love giving every week at church, but sometimes I wonder, what does God's money get used for? Oh man, Erica, there's all sorts of ways our tithes and offerings get used. It goes directly to help God's plan. God uses your offering to help with all the things He's doing in the world. Sometimes what we give goes to help build churches in our neighborhood and around the world. That means more places where kids and adults can hear about Jesus. Sometimes what we give goes to helping people during times in their life when they really need God to provide for them. That means giving people help in our city and across the globe during big and small disasters. Sometimes what we give is used to share the Bible with people who have never had the chance to read it. With apps and technology, we're able to reach others like never before. The money we give as offering becomes a part of all that. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Thanks for your question, Erica, and thanks for giving. Because giving is a great way to reach, reach others and put, put God first. But I want the wine jar. No, I want the wine jar. But I saw it first. No fair, I want it. It's mine. What is going on in here? Oh. We found this big jar of cash and it says wine jar on it. We just assumed whoever's the best at whining wins the cash. No! You're supposed to put money in every time you whine. It's supposed to discourage whining, not encourage it. Oh, right. Eesh. We have been in here whining for over an hour. Hey, up. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name's Dot, and this is how we face the problem with the wines. I'm bored. There's nothing to do around here. Well, did you look for postcards? Yes. And I checked for field office messages, and I went downstairs and yelled for Watkins to come in. And there's nothing. So boring. 
Dot, you know when we wine, we have to put money in the wine jar. A wine jar? That's a horrible idea. It's not fair. <clears throat> well, when everyone stops whining, we can get rid of the wine jar. But that's never gonna happen. It's gonna take like 10,000 years. And I can't wait that long. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and pay up for the rest of the day. So the guy was like, we need collars or no collars. And I'm like, no, it's just a checkerboard. And he gave me this funny look. And I'm like, well, if you don't polish checkerboards, then what does a dry cleaning shop actually do? How did you get ice cream all over your checkerboard anyway? You don't want to know. Okay. Well, let's put the games away and finish our Jonas kit. Oh. But I wanted to play checkers. That's way more fun. I agree, but we really need to finish our Jonas kit. <laughs> but I want to play games instead. I'm a little too tired to write a skit about a Bible guy that smells like the inside of a whale. Ugh. Well, our plan for the day is to write the Jonas skit and film it, and then play checkers. Yeah, but I don't like that plan. I think I just want to play games. Rodney, <laughs> we really should stick to the plan. Vanessa, I hear you, but I think I know better. I'm too tired to write, and I don't want to do my work. Sorry. You better be going to find that wine jar and make a deposit because that was a lot of complaining. So, where did this jar come from? Uh, Alyssa ate all the jelly out of it. No, I mean, who started the wine jar? Oh, that was me. Because Alyssa wouldn't stop whining about how her belly ached because she ate all the jelly out of it. Makes sense. Also, I made it as a reminder of this verse that we know in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 14. Say it with me. Philippians 2, 14. Philippians 2, 14. Do everything without complaining and arguing. Do everything without complaining and arguing. Wah, wah, uh, uh, wah, wah, uh, uh. Wah, wah, uh, uh, wah, wah, uh, uh. Complaining is just another word for whining. And part of growing up is learning to do things without complaining. Sometimes life is tough and all you want to do is just whine it out. I get it. Sometimes when I'm having to do things I don't want to do, I just want to whine too, like brushing my teeth or practicing trumpet. I didn't know you played the trumpet. It's a part of my New Year's resolution. And it's teaching me to practice without complaining, just like the Bible says. Thanks for reminding me that instead of whining, I can choose to have a good attitude. Anytime. Checkmate! I win! Well played, sir. Wait. Who are you and what have you done with the real dot? Whatever do you mean, good friend? Well, normally you... Throw a fit whenever you lose. When have I ever? Well, three weeks ago, you... And then two weeks ago... And I'll never forget last week when you... Hmm. I don't recall acting in such a manner. You mean you don't remember yelling, But I wanted to win! And then scream crying for an hour? Sounds like the old Dot. The new grown-up Dot lives by this point. No more whining or complaining. It's time to grow up. Well, 
Shall we play a new game, Grown Up Dot? I would love that. What was that all about? Oh, I'm supposed to be working, but I'm too tired, and work is hard. <clears throat> what? No more whining or complaining. It's time to grow up. All right. That sounds nice. Oh. Have you seen Vanessa? I think she's up in the observatory. Got it. First, I owe the wine jar a little bit of money for whining about not wanting to do my job. So, I've had some time to give it some thought. Well, just from the lounge to the hub to here. But you were right. You had the better plan all along. Thanks for saying that, Rodney. And I'm sorry I was complaining about you not helping. Well, I didn't hear you complaining. So. Eh, I went and complained to Mike and I had to pay the wine jar. Yeah, I just put some cash in there for my checkers tantrum. <laughs> What's funny is that this skit that we should be working on instead of complaining is about a time when Jonah didn't stop complaining. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, oh, this is hilarious. Right? Okay, what if we add this? Here. That's perfect. Can you name that tune? I think so. Was it When the Saints Go Marching In? Yeah, it was. Hey guys, check out this video we made about Jonah. Mike, your wine jar inspired us. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. is alive. This is the story of a prophet named Jonah with a really bad attitude. Whatever. I do not have a bad attitude. You might recognize the name Jonah as the guy in the Bible who spent some time in the mouth of a whale. But that's not the story we want to tell today. But it's a pretty good story. So this guy Jonah had a huge chip on his shoulder because God asked him to go to a really bad city called Nineveh and deliver a message of repentance. Which is a fancy way of saying... Stop being bad! Now Nineveh was so bad that Jonah assumed God would destroy the city. But something better happened. The people actually heard Jonah's message and God forgave them. You'd think something like this would make Jonah happy, but instead he started yelling at God. I knew you were gonna do this, God! How could you go ahead and forgive such a bad city with such mean people? <laughs> All the while that Jonah grumbled, the sun blazed. It was a very hot day. But God provided a plant to give Jonah some shade. Oh, that shade is nice. Jonah loved the plant and the shade it provided. It calmed him down. <sighs> but then God sent a worm to eat the plant, and that made Jonah even angrier. <laughs> my shade! What happened to my plant? <sighs> well, if my plant is dead, I may as well be dead too. Finally, God asked Jonah, why are you so angry about this plant dying? 
Oh, that was my shade. Ugh, I'm so mad. Then God said, let me get this straight. You feel sorry about a plant dying that you didn't even take care of, but you yell at me when I save an entire city full of thousands of people and animals. Hmm. Well, you make a good point. So God showed Jonah to stop whining and complaining. Take a bow, Jonah. Jonah argued and complained because God didn't answer his prayers the way he thought they should be answered. But the Ninevites did show that they wanted to grow up. They heard God's message and decided to change what they were doing. This was actually the perfect story for me today because I was being difficult about... Everything? Following a plan I didn't like. And just like Jonah, we had to learn that God always wants what's best for us. What's best for everyone. And if his plan is different from the one we made, we can be mature by choosing to follow him without whining. That's a lesson we've all had to remember today. Thanks to Mike and his wine jar, I think we're finally getting the point. Wait, where is the wine jar? Well, everybody had such a good attitude and was complaining less, I thought we all deserved a treat. Beef, beef jerky, jerky yes! yes! Wait, oh. how did you afford such a huge tub of beef jerky? I used the money from the wine jar. Hi, my name is Mike, and we learned some things about whining today that I think will help you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Philippians. Say it with me, like this. Philippians 2.14. Do everything without complaining and arguing. Wah, wah, uh, uh, wah, wah, uh, uh. Some things make us feel like whining, but God tells us to do everything without complaining. In the Bible, Jonah did not act grown up and mature. He whined, complained, and argued with God. He told God what he wanted and was angry when God didn't answer his prayer the way he expected. God used a plant to show Jonah that he wasn't acting very grown up. How do you act when you don't like something or don't want to do something? Do you throw fits, cry, complain, argue, or act rude? That doesn't show that you're growing up and becoming mature. Instead, you can obey, pray, forgive, or choose to have a good attitude, even when you don't feel like it. That's how you show you're growing up and becoming mature. God loves you and knows what's best for you. He listens to your prayers and takes care of you. So when His plan is different from yours, Choose to be mature and grown up by following His plan without arguing. We can have a good attitude and say, no more whining or complaining, it's time to grow up. Let this week be the week we choose to say goodbye to whining. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. When it's showtime, it's okay to just sit back and watch. But when it's worship time, everybody gets up to sing. The songs that connect are an excellent way to let God know that He comes first in our life. Nothing can stop us from showing Him that He deserves our best singing and our endless energy. So get up on your feet and let's connect to God together. Jesus, I am yours. Jesus, I am yours. 
feel like I almost got it. I need to keep practicing. God sees everything, and he has a plan for your life, and it's a great plan. And part of that plan to show you just how much he loves you is he sent his son, Jesus, to die for your sins. Today could be the day that you decide to follow Jesus and choose his plan over yours. And if you've never made that decision, all you have to remember are your A, B, Cs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. And if you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect small group leader before you leave. Connected.